A big shout out goes to Jensen USA, Maxis Tires for supporting the inside line. Welcome mountain bikers. Sweet dude. You ready? You want to do this? Yeah, 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 I'm excited. <laughs> All right. I am too. Dude, pumped. Um before we go too far, can we talk about this? Oh, yeah. You good? Oh my god. <laughs> When that came in, I was just, holy cow, like, I'm you, totally good. you should have been dead. What happened? Yeah, that was a, that was a scary one, actually. Um, so that was like maybe one hour into filming with Carson. Uh -huh. And I hadn't been to Windrock in a while. And I had an idea of what trails I thought would be cool and hadn't seen so much stuff traction in a while. But um, I rode that section one lap before and I was like, all right, I think I know it. It feels pretty good. And there was like a little jump off of this route and you just jump over a little ditch compression and then land and then turn. And he was there filming. So I came in faster than I definitely needed to and got more kick off that route than I thought I would. And then, yeah, just was kind of in full endo mode and missed the landing. And then I pretty much landed right where I needed to turn. And then at that point I was just like, okay, what next? And, I remember seeing, I remember seeing those two trees and my front wheel and I was like, I was kind of in a stop you could see. And then as soon as I hit the leaves, it just kind of like jackknifed into, there was like a log on the ground. And then I remember just thinking like, get between the two trees. And honestly, it went pretty perfect. So, so you, definitely, like, that was a lucky one. You had that thought, like, I have to get between these two trees. Yeah, I had, it looks like it happened so quick, but I remember like, I had like a millisecond to think there. Um. But yeah, it was definitely like a pretty sketchy spot to crash because <laughs> the one tree was like inches from my right like side elbow. And yeah, yeah it was when I looked back on it, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and you didn't to get hurt hitting the ground or anything? Honestly, it was like completely fine. Like a slide out hurts worse than that. It was crazy. I was so lucky. Oh, yeah. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. Me yeah. too. <laughs> That's sweet. All right. Where are you? Where are you calling in from? Um, my hotel room, actually, we just made it to San Remo. We were spending the past three days in finale with Olin's and doing like our first team camp with them and getting the bike set up and stuff. So that was really valuable and yeah, pretty happy with some improvements we made. And now just here for the, in, uh, San Remo for the next day or two, and then we'll move to France for the rest of the week, just doing more downhill laps and some testing and stuff. Okay. And you've got some team news, huh? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Want to talk about that? Yeah. Uh, I'm sure this will be out maybe after we yeah. went out. Okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, sticking with Specialized next year, which is really cool and I'm super stoked about. I'll be with uh, Gen S, uh, Generation Specialized. And so it'll be me. There's actually a few members of the team, but for the World Cup, it'll be me and Isabella Yankova from Bulgaria. Cool. And then there's a few younger Groms, uh, Harry, uh, Harry Schofield, uh, Rosa Jensen, and Giuliano. Um, they're from Fran uh, France, Denmark, and uh, the UK. Okay. But um, yeah, pretty pretty stoked for the opportunity, and it's uh, a lot of the same, but definitely different too. So we have the same team staff, and I have my same mechanic from last year, which is great. And yeah, I feel like it's a pretty solid uh, setup, and definitely uh, looking forward to the year. Cool. What what brought on the change from going to Specialized Factory to Gen S? Um, I think it was a couple things, I think. Um, but to start, I was on Gravity for the past three years, the first two years junior, first year being COVID year in 2020. And then this past year was my first year in the elite season. And I feel like I struggled a bit with some pressure, obviously being on Specialized Gravity and teammates with Loke and Finn. I definitely feel like there was – a bit of pressure and I lot some of it was maybe just me putting it on myself but um I feel like I struggled a bit with that and then I had a few two unlucky injuries one each year and I feel like that put a bit of a a bit of like a damper on what I was kind of aiming for being not being so not being as strong as I wanted to be and as fit as I needed to be and also just like a new change so I feel like with this new Gen S team it's like a great opportunity and it's kind of like a fresh start, but it's also with the same group and 
group of people and staff that I've been around for the past three years. <laughs> um, so like I said, I have my same mechanic and the same staff, Tim and Renault. And I know I've knew I knew Isabella from the last year. So it's a pretty, um, pretty cool setup. Okay, cool. Are there any things you took away from being on specialized factory with like Loic and being around Jack and just kind of their technical racecraft? Yeah. Like literally so much from everybody on the team. They all have so much knowledge and just trying to be a sponge and soak in as much as possible. Um, but yeah, like everything from just being around Loic and Finn on race weekends, like kind of seeing what they do and just trying to see how I could work that into doing it myself and just kind of picking up on some habits of whether it's like mindset or like pre-race stuff or on track. And then the same goes with Jack and Kevin. They're, they're so knowledgeable with, you know, like set, setting up the bike and teaching me like how, how it works and how I could learn to feel my bike and stuff like that. So there's definitely like so much knowledge was, was taken in from that. Yeah. Were there any things that kind of blew you away? Like you never thought, you know, downhill racing could, um, you know, include stuff like that. I think nothing really. Uh, but they, it made me realize how like professional and how dialed in everything has to be to make, uh, to make it happen. Like there's so much stuff behind the curtains that I guess not everybody sees that I was able to see like what goes into to Loic winning all these races and Finn getting his first one last year. So it's really cool to see it all come together, knowing what goes on behind the scenes. Okay, cool. Are you going to be on one of the new bikes, like those protos? I not right now. I'm still riding the the older one, and right now I'm pretty sure it's just Loic and Finn. They're they're kind of the they're testing it out, and I know it's only one size too, which obviously I'm a lot, I'm shorter than them, so I wouldn't be able okay. to ride it, but. It would be cool later, but we will see. Well, yeah, I'll yeah. keep you, I'll let you know on that. <laughs> okay, cool. You know, on that topic, do you feel like, it seems like Loic has gone down this this road, like he was on the demo, same bike, basically for a super long time. Like, do you feel that there's something to be said for consistency and not changing around bikes? Yeah, 100%. Like, they've been on it for yeah, a while now and have so much time to do testing with pretty much everything that you could think of. So it definitely seems like he's really, really confident on it winning, which winning, I don't know how many world championships on it. Um, so yeah, definitely think being on something for a while and you just keep kind of gaining more experience with it and knowledge and building some confidence, which I think is also pretty helpful to me too. Like I'm still finding things on my bike that, I haven't known yet. Like these past few days with Olin's made some improvements that I'm like, why didn't I could have, this could have been great, you know, earlier, but like, I'm now pretty stoked that we're finding more improvements still be on the bike for a few years now. Can you say what those are without giving away any secrets? <laughs> um, it's a lot of just like a lot of just suspension stuff. Like I've was playing with going up down pressure with a lot of rebound settings too. And it's crazy with the Olin's like, one click here or one click there is feels like an insane difference. Like for instance, they, they changed a one click in my rebound and I went and did a run. I didn't know exactly what they had changed. Cause I was going to think about it and try and feel it myself. And then I was like, geez, how many, how many clicks do you change this? It was on my shock. And they was like, they're like just one. And it was really? crazy. Like, yeah, it's, it's so cool. Like oh. what, once you could learn to feel it, like what one little one click here and one click there would do is makes the bike feel like totally different. Okay. That's cool. You know, you've been on Olin's for a few years and they seem like they're pretty technically gnarly, you know, for lack of a better term. Are they working with you in a way that's, you know, do you have new product or there are a lot of changes being made? Like what's going on? Um, yeah, they're super, super into it for sure. The guys, TJ and there's uh, Jimmy who we were working with this past, these past few days. They're a super, super into it and really involved, which is which is great for us. And um, I haven't been like testing so much myself, just trying to improve it. But um, they're definitely helping me like every way they can and trying all these different things that might work for me and just kind of letting me feel what feels good. Um, but yeah, they're super, super involved with everything, and yeah, it's great. Okay, cool. What's training like for you these days? I mean, it's February, you're in Europe, you're training. Do you 
work with someone and you know what do you what do you do if if you do yeah um so i work with uh nick's nicholas Arshute. he lives in france and i started working with him the end of 2020 he also coaches uh, loic and miriam and Sylvie and andre from bmx and a few other people hmm. but um yeah so that's been really great and for this trip specifically for europe it's almost all downhill so i think i'll be here 14 days and 10 of them will be downhill wow. so yes yeah, it's, it's honestly great and it's the most downhill i think i've ever rode within one period of time and forever <laughs> um but usually it's not like this usually it's a lot more gym and some endurance and pump track on the dirt jumper stuff like that but it's been a good off season so far um definitely putting an emphasis on getting a bit more mass and some upper body strength because I feel like that was something I was lacking a bit last year um, with my shoulder not being as strong. Um, but yeah, making good improvements. And my week uh, when I was home a few weeks before I came here and before Christmas was um, about three gym workouts. And on those days I would have an endurance ride with some sort of like intensity with some intervals or something like that. And then around one and two days on the downhill bike, uh, one day off and maybe like a day of e-bike, a longer e-bike ride or a road bike ride. Uh, something like that okay so you know a downhill specific camp like this are you working on things like you know cornering technique or posture like things kind of that fundamental or is it just a matter of like endurance training and line choice or things like that um right now it's more just kind of like you said endurance training some line choice and yeah not so much technique i like I definitely like to look at myself and I'll ask some friends to grab videos and I like to look at my body position and just kind of see uh, if it looks good. And then also like using my full range of motion, like putting my butt all the way to the back tire and kind of getting everything out of, out of that. Hmm. Um, but we don't, don't do so much with technique. Okay. All right. Chris Jensen USA knows that riding with friends makes a day on the trail that much better. So we've got some friends queued up to fire off some questions. Are you ready? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, here we go. Here's number one. Crispy. Hey, man. I was wondering. You're probably the youngest person that's been all around the world to all the greatest tracks. If money wasn't an option, plane tickets, all that, where would you recommend that I go ride? Okay. Um, that's a tough one for sure. And this past year, I spent almost the entire summer in Europe, so I got to see a lot of new places. But I would have to say being in the Morrison area lives up to the hype. Um, did a few days of exploring, and one day with Finn, we, we got up one morning and then went up Super Morrison in the back, and then we made our way all the way over to Switzerland. And on the way, there's we there's a mountain called Lindere, and we rode in Chatel. And this one track in Switzerland called Le Croiset, and that one just absolutely blew my mind. Like we were the only two people on the lift and the track was something I've, I've never seen before. So it was crazy, just like an absolute roller coaster. And so that was just really cool. And the feeling like the scenery on the lifts is insane, uh, first of all. And then the feeling of just being able to like mountain hop, like up one mountain, down the back, up the next one, down the back of that one. It's really neat. And I've never got to do anything like that. And Morzine, like Super Morzine, plenty, like the main area is really good. But I feel like branching off and going to the areas that maybe aren't as crowded and there's some hidden gems back there, which is, it's so worth it. Hmm. Cool. All right, we're going to question two with a buddy you know pretty well. Yo, Chris, what's your go-to race day underwear? <laughs> Carson, <laughs> uh, thanks for the question. Um. I've been wearing Ethica for the past for the past year or two now, and I have this one pair that um, has a sick design on it. I think it's I think it's red, and they're purple. And honestly, the past the past summer, I've I'd use those, and I would only usually I wouldn't wear them as much because when you dry them, they sometimes they get a little wrinkly. But that <laughs> pair, I don't know. I think they're sick. So if, if if I'm stoked on them, why not race with them? But yeah, I do. I do have uh, a race day pair. Okay, <laughs> that's awesome. Do you have anything else for race day that like you're really specific about? Um, 
No, I thought socks would be cool, but uh, all my socks are kind of the same. I don't have like a cool pair that I I, spe- I like the specialized socks, and um, they're all I just have black ones. So I, I haven't I haven't changed the socks much. Honestly, yeah, it's just just underwear. I try to keep a fresh pair of gloves, but that kind of changes um, every few races. All right, one more coming in hot. Well, I assume my main question is probably going to be answered throughout this podcast. So let me just go with this one for you, Chris. If you were to make a Mount Rushmore for your favorite or who you feel are the best downhill racers of all time, uh, who's on your Mount Rushmore? Chris, uh, thanks for the questions. I haven't (laughs) seen him in a few years or no, more than a few years. Last time I saw you uh, in uh, Idaho. Is that right? Cool. Yep. Um, But... I that one takes some thought for sure. Um, first person that comes to mind is Aaron Gwynn because my first mountain bike race ever was actually Mammoth National Champs and was it 2016 maybe? And I just started mountain biking and I was watching some World Cup stuff on the web and obviously found out who Aaron Gwynn was. And I actually have a photo to prove this. Uh, after he won National Champs there, I went and got got a photo with him. And that was like the first photo of uh, a downhill racer that I ever got. And I think I'm pretty sure I was 12. So it's a sick photo. (laughs) And so he was kind of the first person I ever started watching and definitely looked up to because he's rad and he's American. So um, definitely Aaron, I think would be number one. And even though they're the teammates, Loke and Finn are really, really cool. They're, they're, uh, Loic and Finn, I think, would definitely have to be up there. I've spent so much time with them and definitely became good, almost more than friends with them. So there's so many, um, but I've always been a fan of G. Atherton. I've watching him since I started mountain biking and mm. seeing all the, the crazy things he's been doing, uh, even outside of racing. And um, yeah, so I feel like G would G might be number four. I have a five too, but uh. I don't know if I could add that one. Dude, do it. You're in charge. <laughs> okay. Five is definitely Brooke McDonald too. I'm okay. I'm a big fan of those two guys. And um I've got to I've got to know them and a little bit the past few years. So that's been really cool. And I'm I'm a huge fan of, of everything they're doing. Sweet. That's a good that's a good downhill Mount Rushmore for sure. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a solid lineup. Dude, for sure. <laughs> All right, one more. If I was just getting into fireworks, what kind would you recommend? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jack's been around definitely some fireworks uh that we've been lighting. Um you you can't go wrong with ball of rockets. Like if you're just you shouldn't be messing around, but just like shooting them off is so fun. Hmm. Um but I feel like ball of rockets and then those like the little you could get like those those mortars that shoot out of the tube. But um they're like five or six inches. They're massive, but there's some smaller ones that are also really, really cool. And they're like maybe the size of like a little, mm, I don't know, like almost like a bouncy ball, like maybe two inches in diameter max, but they're, they're pretty rad fireworks and uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're sick. <laughs> Jack's <laughs> seen it for sure. <laughs> nice. Do you go ham on 4th so, yeah, of July? Yeah. 4th of July and New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. Okay. Usually, definitely, definitely have to get some fireworks out for those two dates. Nice, <laughs> cool. All right, yeah, we got some scenarios to kind of figure out what matters to you while you're riding. But bar width, lever position, or tire pressure, which one would give you the me- the most problems if it was tweaked? I. Mm. I would have to say maybe the brake position for, I was thinking tire pressure, but also like you could, I feel like that's the easiest thing to adapt to if it's changed. It's the same as like, if you're riding in a really dry condition, it's just real slippery or you could feel if you have a low pressure and you just have to kind of be nicer to it and bar width I've played around a little bit with, but it's, it definitely feels different, but it's, it's pretty, pretty, I feel like it'd be more the most manageable if it was like changed, but brake position I'm pretty meticulous about that, like with how far in off the grip and then the angle of it. Um, I feel like I'm the most meticulous about that, and that would definitely 
if it was like tweaked enough, it would for sure make it really, really hard to ride. Okay. What's your bar width right now? 760. Okay. And have you gone, have I you moved. Wider? Uh, I haven't. I was running 740 for <laughs> from the beginning of uh, 2022 for the, I think, almost four or five years uh, before that. So I never really changed anything and figured it was time to try some wider bars. And I tried 750 and 760 and definitely it was felt more comfortable. And yeah, so I feel like that was a pretty, pretty good change. But I think going wider isn't really necessary because I feel like it looks pretty good and feels pretty good. Okay. And yeah, I don't have the biggest wingspan either. So uh, 760, I think is a good, good width. Okay, cool. All right. Would you rather have crappy tires and good suspension or good tires and crappy suspension? Um, crappy tires and good suspension. Okay. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think that's a good answer. Um, the Owens is insane. And when it's, when it's good, when it's fresh and fresh off the of service, it's like, it's next level. And yeah, I feel like you, that overcomes anything with like a beat, beat tire or some, some worn out side knobs. Okay. All right. We're going to go into the Maxis Max speed round. And these are just quick and easy questions. i fire them off and okay. see what you think. All right, you know when you fly, and you've got the tray table in front of you, and it's got the little dial, like the little knob. Do you have yeah. to center that perfectly perpendicular, or can it be crooked? I feel like I always center it. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, when you get on the plane, like I always kind of mess with it, or sometimes even wipe it down with a little Clark's wipe, but I always make sure it's centered. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I do too. I have to have it centered. I'm just like, making sure yeah. it's perfect. Uh, window or aisle seat? Uh, I'll see it all the way. Okay. Which foot do you ride forward? Right foot forward. Okay. Which way do you feel you turn best? I feel like turning a right-hander is my more natural side of turning. Okay. Which way do you whip best? Like which way did the back tire go out, out to the left or the right? Uh, the back tire goes out to the left. Okay. Is, yeah, the natural way. All right. Do you ever ride green trails on purpose for fun? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think they're super fun just to kind of jib around on, especially when you're with a, a group of guys and just, just doing dumb things on the trail. It's always ended up being so funny and laughing so hard. You, you, you know, you have to concentrate on riding. So for sure, you can have a lot of fun on green trails. Okay, cool. What's your current daily driver at home, your, your vehicle? Um, I'm actually driving a Sprinter van, a really, a really yeah. big one right now. It's, it was, it's my dad's car and he's just been letting me have the reins to it for, for all the bike you need. So yeah, pretty grateful for that. And yeah, it holds all the toys. So really couldn't ask for something better. Okay, sweet. All right. For the first world cup, you have to either race on flat pedals or race in shorts, which would you do? Racing in shorts a hundred percent. Um, okay. I like flat pedals, but I don't ride them enough to always feel really, really confident on them. And before I started racing world cups junior year, I, always race in shorts like i was super against pants i thought they were like tight and always tight at the knee and i raced in shorts for so long for sure i could go right back to it and be fine okay have you ever gone from a ride straight into the shower with your kid on i've never done that <laughs> okay yeah i I don't know. Uh, I don't know what type of state you'd have to be in like really <laughs> really cold from a cross country ride in the winter like i could definitely see how that's that's possible, but I haven't got to that point yet. Okay. I've heard from a couple people that they've done that. Like they just really go into wash, like, Oh, wash my helmet and my clothes. Just leave them on and go. <laughs> so, okay. Is it like a da after a downhill day or like a cold cross country day? I have no idea. I'm not sure which. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. You might have to clean the drain after a muddy downhill day of that one. For real. Yeah. Especially where you're at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. That's the end of the max speed section, but Okay. I was going through some photos that Jack sent and I guess I've noticed this before, but like, do you ride in full armor, upper body protection? Um, yeah, uh, pretty much always. I've just been wearing the chest protector and, and elbow pads for, for a while now. Um, sometimes if it's just like going and doing some chill riding with friends or 
not like focusing on doing like fast runs, I guess we'll go without the elbow pads and just the chesty, but I like wearing it. I always feel a bit almost like naked without it. And even when you're just messing around, sometimes you, you know, do some silly and slide out or something. And it's always kind of nice. So it's just habit, but I usually always wear the pads. Is it more for like abrasion protection or do you feel like just all kinds of impact? Um, definitely all kinds. The elbow pads, I, th- I feel like are a bit more of just abrasion. Um, but the chesty, I feel like is always good. Like whether it's a stick or a handlebar or one time I even like kind of knocked my, my chest on the stem and I was like, without, without the chesty, I feel like it would have hurt way worse. So it's hmm. just not worth it. Okay. Do you feel like that's going to be a more of a trend with, with younger riders like you? Cause it seems like a lot of the older guys are, you know, they don't run a lot of protection. I hope so. I mean, I feel like it should. Like, I like that there's some rules at races that you have to be wearing this stuff because it really doesn't doesn't really cost anything or like that you don't like feel that restricted in my opinion wearing it. So it's just yeah, it's just worth it because when you fall, you always want to have as much as much stuff as you can to help kind of protect you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's always a point to like too much, but as long as you can ride normally, I see. I don't see the point in just going without stuff okay nice if you could have one do-over in 2022 what would it be uh that would 100 percent be lords the first world cup of the year back in march um this was my first race in the elite category first world cup in the elite category and weekend was going pretty good and in my quality run i had a kind of a crazy freak accident um i feel like it was real unlucky and so i was in my quality run and 15 seconds ish from the finish, like one corner basically to go. I landed a little funny and had a little bike mechanical and then it, it ripped my shoulder out, like fully dislocated. And in, in the moment I had adrenaline running and I didn't exactly know what happened. So I tried to keep going. And then there was like 10 whoops kind of just before the last corner. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I reached that, maybe uh, 25 meters after from where it happened, I knew like something was wrong and it was impossible to ride. So I pulled off and then got checked out by the doctors, went to the doctor's doctor, um, and got, got it put back in and taken care of. But, um, it was just a massive bummer. I was, I was pretty down about it because obviously first world cup, I, I was real excited and stoked for it. And then having this happen, was like, kind of like, Oh, come on. So ended up having to take almost a month off because I got an MRI and they're like, yeah, but we want it to just kind of be still and c- try to let it heal as much as we can. Mm-hmm. So it was in a sling and then just been doing lots of rehab and then pretty much went straight into Fort William after not riding for almost a month, like one and a half weeks riding, maybe <laughs> right into that. And then first time at Fort William too. And it was honestly, it was so gnarly. So I would redo that race just because I feel like that kind of made the season so much harder because I had pretty much a one weaker side the whole season, which made it really difficult on some of these harder tracks hmm. and felt like I was just kind of trying to race myself back into shape. And then especially when you jump into the elite class, like it's, it's, it's pretty gnarly. So you definitely can't be, you have to be on it. So um, yeah, just, just racing myself back into shape and, I feel like it was, I was getting better as the season was going on. Just, um, would have liked to have a few more races. So yeah, I would have definitely redo Lords cause, cause of that. Okay. Makes sense. Dude. Yeah. yeah. Is, what did, what do you think about all the, the 23 world cup stuff? Like the fact it starts so late and I don't know, just kind of all the drama going on with, with the season and the ESO and just the different changes and all that. Like how, how are you feeling? Um, I, it's definitely weird. Like starting the season in June, I definitely feel like is a little weird. Like it would be cool. I feel like most riders feel the way that it should start a little earlier because the last two races in October, like Mont St. Anne, for example, it could be snowing. Like it'll be fall, maybe leaves. Who knows how <laughs> frozen it will be. So maybe, I guess we'll see. But I feel like there's definitely some risk being snowshoe Mont St. Anne that the weather could be like tremendous and it could be pretty gnarly. Um, and with the other changes, it'd be, try to keep an open mind. There's definitely a lot of opinions circulating and of what can happen, but it seems like it could be also really, really cool and really good. So I guess we'll see kind of what happens. But yeah, what yeah, do you think about the, the semifinal format and all that kind of stuff? 
it's definitely going to be different. I think it'll be a, a definitely a, a more like a bigger weekend, a lot more a mo- more racing. Obviously, like three race runs instead of two. Um, like Sunday, for example, juniors won't be racing, so it'll be like wake up, hour and a half of practice, pretty pretty soon right into semifinal, and then if you advance out of that, I heard it'd be about an hour and a half off while the women race, and then mm-hmm. right back into the final. So I think it'll be hard for riders to kind of focus in twice and find that limit that of one race run for two race runs. So I think that's going to be difficult, especially for the top guys. Um, but definitely would be cool to see. And it sounds like the top 60 will get some, some TV coverage. So that'll be, that'll be interesting out of semifinal. Yep. And so it's all obviously good for everybody to get, to get on the broadcast. And yes, that's really cool. So we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, hopefully the change is, is for the good. Yeah, hope so. Yeah, it's just so gnarly. It's still like five months away. <laughs> you know, I wanted yeah. to start now. Yeah, Are you and going it's a to pretty the... big change. Sorry? Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, it's a pretty big change. Like, I guess the World Cup hasn't seen so many changes recently. So I guess a lot of the riders, obviously, it's just like hard to maybe, hard to change. So, yeah, but it for sure. could be cool. So pretty excited to see how it goes. Cool. Are you going to the test event? Yep. Yeah, that's the plan. Um, it's in uh, April. I don't know where yet, but yeah, that's the plan to go to that for sure. Okay. Do you get nervous in the start gate? Yes, uh, for sure. I'm, that's something I've been trying to work on, and I feel like it's getting better, but I've always been one to be pretty nervous, like even when I was 13, 14 racing down the southeast. Um, <laughs> but I think it's good in a way, but just trying to manage it the best I can because um, – yeah, nervous, being nervous and also trying to be like as focused as possible is something trying to continue to work on. Are, yeah. What are the ways you're trying to deal with it? Like outside of just getting a thousand race runs under your belt, like what are you doing in the meantime? Yeah, for sure. I, I think the more I can race, the better right now and just getting that experience. But um, trying to do a, work a bit on the mental side of things and just kind of have my head clear for the weekend like even practice quality and race you have to be so focused in to kind of get going on the track and get up to speed quick and yeah it's been working on that the mental side of things with my coach um and my coach nicks and um trying to just be like okay everything is done all the work is done this is my lines just kind of getting all that in stone so then i'm I'm like okay now i just have to go ride my bike fast and because I definitely would sometimes would second guess myself or be like, ah, I should, well, should I do this or that? And then they're just trying to, trying to work on being like, this is what I got. Just go with that. And it's going to be better off. Gotcha. I know you haven't been racing, you know, super long, but how do you handle low points? You know, how do you, how do you try to bounce back? Um, I feel like this first year I you definitely didn't have so many points um, and just trying to take it as like, this is experience. Like I'm young and this is my first year racing and just taking so much in and learning so much that I feel like it's, it's okay, but definitely want to um, be up there more next year and definitely get going, get some, get some points going and be, be, be higher up there. Okay. Yeah. What are, do you have specific goals for this year? Um, not specific ones yet. I'm definitely thinking and would like to talk to my coach and the team about that. Um, but I definitely feel like just being healthy and working on some consistency is, is key for obviously the whole season. And it's really hard to be consistent through so many races, but I feel like that's something I'm trying to work on. And, um, yeah, being physically, I think better, um, is going to help. It's going to help a lot just on these long, hard tracks and, yeah, I feel like there's a handful of things that are that are going good and coming into this year. Do you have high pivot FOMO at all? No. Like my bike feels great and I'm pretty stoked on it. And I think that I don't think that you need the maybe the high pivot to to have the best bike. So yeah, my bike I honestly wouldn't change it. It feels so good. Yeah, it just seems like yeah. the last couple of years it was all about high pivots, but that yeah. You know, that's like... the trend. But um yeah, I doesn't necessarily mean it's the best for sure. Yeah. And there are plenty <laughs> of wins that aren't on them. So yeah. yeah, for sure. TikTok or Instagram. 
I'd have to say Instagram, but <laughs> I've been on TikTok more recently, probably more than I should. Okay. Posting, but also doing some scrolling. But yeah, I feel like I like Instagram more. Are you going to do the vlogs this year? You did a couple last year, right? Yeah, uh, I definitely like to, and that's the plan. Been We've made four now with Carson, 95MTB. He's mm-hmm. the best. And I really like doing it. I think it's really fun, and I feel like it's cool for kind of everybody and the sponsors and everything. So I definitely would like to, to get more of those going. It'd be cool to do more at some races, I think, maybe to show a little insight. And also just like training days, riding days. I I like doing it and I definitely like to do more for sure. Um, I feel like, I don't know, a lot of riders are doing that kind of thing now. And I feel like it's it's also pretty valuable. Like people, I feel like everyone likes it. And there's so much stuff on social media nowadays too. And I think it's something that's, that's pretty good to be doing. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like that's going to distract from racing or a race weekend at all? No. Um, there's always like, there's always been some cam like photo guys and video guys around anyway. And I've honestly like, don't really notice it so much. So for me, I don't think it would change anything as far as racing, but it's cool to have like some insight to look at after the week. Um, yeah, for me, yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. We'll wrap it up with this. I want you to think about what you'd tell yourself 10 or 15 years from now, as you look back on, you know, 2022 and 2023 do you have goals that are that long term where you want to be think you'll still be racing like what do you think your future looks like um yeah for sure that's my goal that's my dream is is to to ride bikes and race bikes for a living and my goal is definitely to to be at the top of the sport and be one of the top guys fighting for wins is is my dream so for sure that's that's the goal and I feel like I would tell myself to to be patient maybe and because it doesn't happen overnight and everyone's like you're young just take the experience like it like it's gonna come just keep just keep pushing and I would also say maybe to live in the moment like doing what we do we're all really really lucky and it's a privilege to be able to go to race all around the world and see all these cool places so I'm definitely really grateful for that and it's I'd say definitely to take all, take that all in and appreciate it. Cause it's so cool. Awesome. All right. Give a big shout out to the people who've helped you. Um, for sure. Parents, uh, my stepmom and just everyone back at home in the Southeast spent lots of time riding with Nico, the Shaw boys, Dakota Norton. And then of course all the sponsors specialize. I've been riding specialized bikes my whole life since I got my first bike from our local bike shop. So specialized, the team, specialized gravity and generation specialized and all the team and staff and sponsors on board with that. Definitely. It's not possible without them. And yeah, just everybody online. And I always try to read all the messages and respond to everybody. So I, yeah, appreciate everyone for all the support. Awesome. Thanks, man. Look forward to seeing you shred this season. Thanks a lot, Sean. Yeah, it's good. Good to be on. Thanks, dude.